Okay, I am Jerry Gilmore. My job is Professor of Experimental Philosophy at the Institute of Astronomy in Cambridge University in England. Uh, my particular field of interest is the formation and evolution of the Milky Way and in particular interest the role of dark matter in the formation of galaxies like the Milky Way and in turn what we can learn about dark matter itself from studying galaxies like the Milky Way, their satellites, their history and their evolution. So it's the connection between elementary particle physics and astrophysics. The really big things we're trying to make sense of uh, in Milky Way formation and evolution are the uh, origin of the chemical elements. Why do we have the particular pattern of chemical elements that we do have, the stuff of which we are made? Where does it come from? Why is it distributed as it is? When was it formed? We know that chemical elements are created in stars so that we are made of stardust, but we don't understand why they're all so similar. We don't understand why there's this narrow range. We don't understand how the part of the Milky Way that we live in is such a simple looking place. It ought to be much more complicated. And we don't understand why we're not being rained upon by pieces of dark matter. Standard cosmology tells us that the universe is full of lumps of dark matter and these things should be flying all around the place. We should see them near us and we don't. And maybe those two questions are the same and maybe they're different. Well, I don't know. I'm trying to find out if there's one answer to two complicated questions. So my particular topic here at this meeting is the galactic disk. In fact, there are two galactic disks and this is a critical part of it. Galaxies like the Milky Way have both a thin disk, like the Milky Way itself, the thing we see on the sky, and they also have an older, thicker disk. And in fact, I discovered the older, thicker disk uh, about 25 years ago now. It makes up, in fact, nearly a quarter of the whole Milky Way, and yet we didn't even know it existed until, uh, until the 1980s. And so our particular interest then is understanding how a disk forms. A disk is a great big thin thing. How do you make a great big thin thing in the universe? Uh, whereas the thick disk is a, again a great big thing, but it's a bit thicker. And so what was the process that made that thick disk long, long ago? It seems to be only old stars. And what is the processes that keep on making the thin disk, the stuff we see on the sky, our own Milky Way, new stars forming, spread out in this great big disk? What is that process? The uh, special thing about the sky that we look up there, we see young stars forming. We see Orion and things like that, full of stars that are just forming today, planets that are forming today. Uh, <clears throat> those things, are, the, those stars, as they explode into supernovae, they create new chemical elements, they enrich the interstellar medium, they create then new planets and probably new people. Uh, <clears throat> that process is continuing today in the thin disk. It stopped long ago in the thick disk. We don't really know what's going on in the middle regions of our galaxy. That's where we'd really like to find out what's happening. That's where most of the stars are. And we have only a very vague idea of what's happening in the very outer parts of our Milky Way as well. So the real challenge right now is to connect the part of the Milky Way near the Sun, where we can see what's happening by eye and with our telescopes, with the parts that are further away and are much harder to study and to understand, so that we can get the big picture view of what's really going on. Now, the key thing about the Milky Way is that it's there. We're inside it. Sounds a simple, obvious thing, of course we're inside it, but in fact, if you measure how fast the sun is moving, we shouldn't be inside it at all. The Milky Way should be flying apart, and the sun should not be part of the Milky Way. It should be out in the middle of nowhere. But we are still here, and we're here because of the weight of the dark matter. So everything that we see in the sky is actually held there by the, the dark matter, the stuff. We don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it's the most important stuff of all. So everything we see is sort of irrelevant compared to this other stuff. And this other stuff is heavy and it's transparent. We can't see it, but we can feel it. <clears throat> and so our big challenge, the really fundamental challenge, is to say, what is this stuff? Why is it there? And just say, thank you, stuff, for holding us into our Milky Way. Right, now Gaia is, is our big hope for the future. In fact, I'm one of the originators of the Gaia proposal. I've been working on Gaia since 1991, a long time now. Uh, and I had the good fortune to present the proposal to build Gaia to the European Space Agency successfully 12 years ago now. Uh, and so I'm very, very much looking forward to what it's going to produce. And of course, really what Gaia is going to produce is precision. It's 
first time ever we're going to be able to say where things are and how they're moving and that leads us to two special things. How they're moving tells us about how the mass is distributed, that's the dark matter. So it'll be the first time ever we'll be able to produce a 3D map of how the dark matter is distributed rather than the 2D picture of the Milky Way itself. The second thing that Gaia will do, because it tells us very accurately how bright things are, it will tell us how old stars are. And that's essentially impossible to do today. And so when we know how st old stars are, then it's like doing a census on people in a town. I can count how many people of a different age there are, and I can tell you when they were born and at, whether more people lived a long time ago than live now, and so on. Exactly the same thing with Gaia and the Milky Way. We can say, how fast is the Milky Way developing? Did it mostly happen long, long ago and we're just fading away now and we're near the end of the Milky Way's life? Or are we in the middle of the Milky Way's life? We have absolutely no idea. And so this will be the first time we'll be able to step way outside the lifetime of a human and say how old stuff is from 10 billion years ago to even more excitingly, 10 billion years into the future. So we can not only measure the past, we can predict the future.